Good morning. This is Ministering During Transition. We have uh, transitioned uh, from the teachings on uh, transitioning in the kingdom, the transition of the church age, and now we're moving into ministering during transition. As God is preparing a people to do that, to minister during transition. We are in the beginnings of the transition <clears throat> uh, of God bringing forth the greatest anointing, power, revelation of himself that has ever been in the earth. We're coming into the days of greater things than these, and God is preparing a people to steward those days. So let's go into our teaching today, and we're going to lay a foundation for understanding ministering during transition. This is also a study manual that uh, we have written and is available from our website, but we felt to begin to teach it online because it is something that God is preparing a people for. Uh, and it's going to have to change the way that we minister. So God is dealing with his people to prepare for the days to come. One of the things God deals first with in any age is the leadership. The Lord indicated to me that I need to teach a course that will help God's leaders lead into the next revival and expression of his purpose in the earth. God has got to prepare a people uh, so that the net does not break as it has in other revivals. And God's heart is that we grow up into him in all things, including how to be a fisher of men. The principles are found in a study of the leaders who ministered as God transitioned Israel from one revelation of himself to another. And Israel went through a number of these transitions, and we're going to look at the leaders that both how they were prepared and how they functioned during the transition and learn the principles of God concerning uh, functioning as transition ministries. I call these ministers of transition. The principles we're going to study are drawn from the lives and ministries of these type of ministries. We've defined ministry by position. As a, as a people, we've done that. God defines ministry by function. What ministry titles are, are not as important as the fact that they function. If they function doing as Jesus instructs, then in the eternities, where it counts, they will be positioned by God. There were periods of time that clearly fall under the time in which God is setting the stage for a new age. During the 400 years of waiting, which scripture calls the process of time, there was not any significant ministry. It was basically done by the elders in Egypt. No man or woman stands out yet. There was some level of relationship with God and some type of ministry within the tribes. Another analogy is the times of the judges. There were 13 of them, but, and only Samuel presided over a time of transition. Again, Solomon was not a transition ministry in any way. Transition ministries make a different, make a significant contribution to the times they're in and each of the three portions of time they minister into. The pre-transition time, the transition time, and the post-transition time. And those three actually define uh, the how we're going to divide this up in our teaching. Often the men and women God used to do this were in some manner an expression of the prophetic office. It was their willingness to speak and enact the prophetic will of God and made it easier for others and for others to move and function in God. This was not because or this was because of the preparation work done in the spirit, in their hearts, 
and beforehand. Their lives and ministries blazed the trail into new and at that time unknown realms of the Spirit, making it possible for others to follow. Each of these operated in the old, prophesied the new, went through the transition, and established a new order when the transition was over. Each, let me read that again. Each of these operated in the old, prophesied concerning the new, went through the transition, and established a new order when the transition was over. Some were transitions within the dispensations they lived in to another aspect of God's plan for that dispensation. We will example some of those as well. So, let's first of all lay out ministries of transition that we will be dealing with as we go along in this study. The first transition ministry we're going to look at is Noah. He transitioned from the age of conscience to the age of the patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob established patterns for the patriarchal age. Job established a pattern of going through transition and was also an example of restoration and beyond. Moses was the transition ministry from the patriarch patriarchal age to the age of the law. Within that, Joshua established the people in the new land, transitioned them from the wilderness, from the old into the new, with a whole new mindset, a whole new uh, way of functioning, teaching them how their hands to war and their fingers to fight. Samuel transitioned from the law to the rule of the kings, or from prophetic leadership or judging leadership to the rule of the kings. David, from a single priesthood to a corporate priesthood. And that is an interesting transition uh, that also, uh, David also is a type of a king priest in training. And uh, we, in another uh, on another web page, we're dealing with the teaching of the son who's being called and prepared for kingship. Uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, setting the stage for the transition from the church to the church age through restoration leadership. John the Baptist and Jesus were transition ministries from the law to the church age. The Apostle Paul was a transition ministry from Judea, Judea, Ju, Judaic Christianity to freedom in the spirit and expression of the body of Christ. Now, it does not mean that all the aspects of Judaic Christianity were done away with. It means that God built something and was uh, pointing prophetically towards the one new man aspect of things. This, number four, the two witnesses, transition ministry from the church age to the millennium. Within that is also the corporate son. He, est he establishes the rule of the millennium. <clears throat> and then we have the corporate son to the bride, or from the millennium to the new heaven and new earth. All of these have transition ministries and have a type of function and flow that we will draw the types from their ministry to take us into an understanding and an expectation of what God is about to do. With each ministry of transition there will be an adding to the basic principles of transition because each one had a further revelation of God. We will study their character traits and then see how the principles of transition applied in their uh, function and flow as a transition ministry. After that, we'll study any new principles revealed 
as we progress through each of the ministries of transition, both the major ministries from age to age and the minor ones, ministries within the major ages that took God pe God's people through transitions in t within the age. There are end time implications of all of these things. Each of these has some type of tie into the last days of this age. Consider the following. Noah, Matthew 24, 37 says, but as in the days of Noah, or as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Luke 17, 26 says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Job, in Job 19, 26, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. That has to be a direct reference to resurrection and living, I believe, for him during the millennium as well. Because I believe some of these old saints that walked with God uh, in the, the dimensions uh, for their day, God is going to raise and bring them into the kingdom age. So there are end time implications. Abraham, Luke 17, 20, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they shall eat, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. It was Abraham that interceded so that God rescued Lot from Sodom. His was the ministry of the hour that made it possible for some to be rescued. If in the days of Lot there was a ministry like Abraham, so in the end time, when it comes, there will be a ministry like Abraham. In the days of Lot, when the, that time comes, there will be a corporate ministry like Abraham standing for righteousness and interceding for redemption. During the patriarchal ish, uh, time, you will have, you had Isaac, he, and by the way, it was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that were the transition ministries. Uh, Isaac was the child of promise representing fulfillment of the promises of God. God has promised that in the last day there would be a corporate man or son. Isaac is a type of that son. Jacob in Genesis 49.1 And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you what that which shall befall you in the last days. Jacob prophesied into the latter days or the last days at the end of this age. Powerful, powerful stuff. Moses was a ministry of transition. Malachi 4, 4 and 6 says about this, about referring directly to the end time. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel with statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The context of this is the last days, placing Moses as one of those who comes back in the last days before the coming of the Lord to prepare the way of the Lord. Revelation 11, 3 through 7, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will uh, hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. They have power over the waters to turn them to blood, to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. 
And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. The signs that these two move in give indication that they are Moses and Elijah. Others within the age of the law. Samuel, who was the prophet that led from um, the time of the judges to the time of the kings. He presided over the transition. And then you have David in Ezekiel 34 and 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them. He shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd, speaking actually of David being resurrected in the millennium to minister to Israel and to give leadership. John the Baptist and Jesus. Remember, Jesus was also a sign in Luke 2 and 34 for a sign which shall be spoken against. The other night I shared a message on this, a brief message, but uh, gave indication of its prophetic uh, implications for the end time. Here we have two ministers, ministries, making up the transition team. John came in the spirit and power of Elijah, and Mo Jesus came as the prophet like unto Moses. Another indication from my perspective and my seeing of things that these are the two that will come in Revelation 11. In Revelation 11, 3 and through 7, which we have already read, but we're going to look now at the two witnesses and the corporate son. And so in moving on, having read this passage before uh, in this lesson, let's go to Revelation 12, 5 through 7. And this is talking now about the corporate son. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they can only refer back to the man-child uh, indicating that it's corporate. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. The grand finale, the bride led by the corporate son with the head, Jesus Christ. This leads us in the age, into the ages to come, the new heaven and new earth, as well as into eternity. Ephesians 2 and 7 says that in the ages to come, he might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. And then the reading of Re Revelation chapter 20 through 22, uh, where the description of the bride, the lamb's wife is, and of the leading into eternity. Here's some thoughts to ponder. In each of these, there are principles to be treated. In our next lesson, we lay down some of God's consistencies seen during transition. And the consistencies then would be the principles by which transition ministries are governed. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we get ready to navigate the transition from the church age to the kingdom, would you help us grasp how you desire to minister? Throughout the ages, you have had men and women of wisdom that could guide your people when everything was shaky. Would you make me one of those ministries, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Now here is uh, the contact information for those of you who desire to correspond with us. Uh, you have the ma mail, the postal address, Dr. William J. Hurst, 3209 Mountain Ash Road South, Jacksonville, Florida, 
32223. And there you can send comments and questions, uh, which we will answer as quickly as we can. Just make a note of it in the subject um, box and also reference the less lesson that you were referring to, which will help us uh, locate your answer and frame your answer uh, more quickly. Also, those of you whom God speaks to and desire to donate by check, uh, make your checks to ISCL uh, and they will be able to be receded at the end of the year. We ask that you pray about helping us continue as expenses are going up and uh, this is not funded by any other ministry but by the free will offerings of the people. Uh, at the end of the year, uh, your tax, you will be able to get a tax receipt for any donations you might give. Uh, our email, or I mean our um, website, is www.drwmjhurst.com. And there you will find study manuals available for purchase, as well as DVDs and CDs. Uh, some of them will be series, both the study manuals and the DVDs, uh, and some of them will be individual messages or individual courses. Uh, also on that site, you'll find a donate, but, donate button. And again, we ask that you pray and ask the Lord how you can help us continue this ministry on the internet and as we are also available to minister in churches uh, to help us fund all of that. Our email address is drwjhurst at gmail.com. Comments and questions may be sent to that email address. And I will answer them as quickly as I can. This is uh, Dr. William J. Hurst, Teaching All Nations, the Practical Word of God, and mentoring students, one student at a time. May God give you the ability to grasp what we have been sharing and impart into your spirit a hunger for more of himself.